thanks for visiting my channel i hope you are enjoying spring we're finally getting a little bit of sunshine this afternoon we've had the midwest has just had terrible downpours so if you're in the midwest you know what i'm talking about if you don't live in the midwest good for you um, but i'm happy to see the sunshine in the afternoon this afternoon anyway it is friday and that means mexican food for us my husband and i love mexican food and we've kind of made it started making it a tradition to have mexican food on friday night and if you've watched many of my videos you know how much i've shared my love of mexican food so anyway we are going to be making enchiladas now the main reason I wanted to do this video was to show you how easy it is to make your own homemade enchilada sauce, but I consulted with my husband and he said I should show the whole thing. So we're going to show the whole, I'm going to show you the whole thing, the whole way I make um, just basic beef enchiladas, but the star of the show is really the homemade sauce and that's really what I wanted to share with you today. So let's get started. Okay guys, we are going to start by... Um, adding or starting with the flavor the flavoring of our sauce and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a chipotle in adobo sauce and i'm going to mix it blend it um, with a little bit of chicken stock so we're going to do that first got one pepper in there now if you love heat you could always use more than one pepper I like heat, but I don't like my mouth to be on fire. So I'm only going to use one pepper here. Um, just a little tip, it, when you open a jar of the chilies, you can, if you're not going to use them all, just stick them in a freezer bag and freeze them, and then you can use them as you need it. So we're going to start with that, and then we're going to add about a half a cup of chicken stock. Homemade chicken stock. Just saying. If you're not doing that, you might want to give it a try. And we're just going to put it in our blender and process our chili. Okay, I hope I've moved you in close enough that you can see everything. Um, well, enchilada, homemade enchilada sauce is so easy. And after I learned to do this, I could kick myself for all the times I bought it from the grocery store in a jar. This is way better and it does not take a whole lot of effort. So um, what I got it is I have my pan preheating on about a medium heat. And to that, we are going to add about three tablespoons of olive oil. You can use whatever fat you like but I like using olive oil. We're gonna let that heat up for a second and then I'm going to add three tablespoons of flour. Um, we're basically making a roux. Not basically, we are. We're making a roux. So we're gonna put our flour in there. You wanna dissolve the flour in your fat. We're gonna whisk it for about a minute. I want it to start to bubble and thicken. Okay, after about a minute, we are going to add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. And we're gonna whisk that in. The heat's a little too high, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. We want it to bub bubble and simmer, but we don't want it to splatter and make a mess. So we're gonna stir that in. And then we are going to add about two cups of chicken stock. And whisk that in. And now we're going to add our flavorings, seasonings, flavorings. Okay, we're going to add the uh, chili and adobo that we processed with the chicken stock. And then we're going to add, and um, a lot of this is up to you. You know, I always say that. Um, we're going to start with about two tablespoons of um, chili powder. I love the dark chili powder. So I'm going to start with about two tablespoons of that. You can add as many as you want, 
but I'm gonna add, start with two, and then once I get my other seasonings in, I'm gonna taste it and see if I need more. Whisk that in, and it's gonna give our sauce a beautiful dark red color. And I'm making a mess with my whisk. Then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a half a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. Now, if you don't have Mexican oregano on hand, you can use regular oregano, but in my opinion, there's nothing like Mexican oregano in um, Mexican cooking. It, it's, a, it's just a different flavor. It's not the same. I know a lot of recipes um, say to just use oregano, but I found that the Mexican oregano makes a difference. And the funny thing is, I, the way I found out about Mexican oregano is I accidentally bought it one time in place of regular, I needed regular oregano and ended up picking up a bottle of Mexican oregano. And I'm like, I have no clue how to use this. So I went, did some Googling to find out how to use Mexican oregano. And then I started using it and I've never gone back. It, it's really delicious in Mexican food. So we're gonna give that a stir, and then I'm gonna also add about a teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna bring that up to a simmer. How easy was that? Almost as easy as going to the store and picking up a can of enchilada sauce that's not nearly as good. Um, I also wanted to mention that if you don't, if you don't want chicken stock, you can always use vegetable stock instead. That's up to you. I don't think beef would work very well here, um, but chicken stock is great, and so is vegetable. So use what you have on hand or whichever you prefer. Okay guys, um, I brought my sauce up to a simmer and I'm gonna continue to let it simmer. Um, you can um, simmer it for as long as you want and you can adjust the thickness to however thick that you prefer it. But you want it to at least coat the back of a spoon. So when you dip your spoon down in it, it should coat it and if you run your finger, mm, run your finger down the spoon, it should hold its shape. So that's what you're looking for. Tastes so good. It was perfect for me heat-wise, so I didn't need to add anything else to it. So just make sure you taste it. And like I said, if you like a lot of heat, go ahead and use two chipotle peppers or um, add more other seasonings, the chili powder or whatever you like. So, but that is perfect for me. And how easy was that? So while I let that simmer, I'm going to start on my filling. Okay guys, I'm working on my filling. I, like I said earlier, I'm just doing a basic beef enchilada. That is my husband's favorite and you don't mess with his favorite. So that's what we're doing tonight. So um, I'm just browning some good quality ground beef. Um, I like to use ground round or ground sirloin, but whatever works for you is totally fine. And I'm also going to add about half of a sweet onion, small sweet onion. Enchilada filling, I mean, the sky is the limit. I've done it a lot of different ways. You can do chicken. You can, sometimes I, when I make beef, I add about a half a cup of black beans to it, or you could add fresh corn to it, or frozen corn to it, either one. Um, makes it pretty. And then just whatever flavors you like. But tonight we're just gonna do a basic beef, and that's just going to have my onion, my ground beef, and some salt and pepper. So, I will, once we get this browned up, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, just a little kitchen tip, has nothing to do with this recipe. Um, I like for all of my spice jars to match, it makes things um, look prettier and um, sit better on your shelf if they're all the same size. So what I do is, I like the Spice Islands um, it can be any brand you like, whatever brand that you like. Um, I start saving my jars 
um, when I run out of a spice. And then I just buy the chalk, wash it really well, buy the chalkboard labels and label it so that um, if there's another brand of spice that's on sale, um, I can just pop it in this jar and it makes things sit more uniformly on my shelf if that makes sense. So it's just a, a nice little kitchen tip. I've had people look at my pantry and say it looks so organized, it looks so pretty and that's why. But So that's just a good little tip. Just save your jar. If, you, if, you're, um, if, if your spice comes in a pretty jar, just save the jar, wash it, you can use a chalkboard label and then you can also buy your spices in bulk and you don't have to have the big bulky um, containers of spices sitting in your working pantry. So just a little tip. Okay guys, we're back. My um, ground beef has nicely browned and my onions are nice and tender. So um, what I'm gonna do now, my sauce has been simmering this whole time. So you wanna check and make sure that it's still the consistency you like it. Um, if you need to thin it out some, you can always add more chicken stock. Mine is pretty good. So um, we're just gonna go with that. And at this point, what I'm going to do to season my ground beef is I'm going to add about a half a cup of my sauce to my ground beef and onion mixture. Just to add a little bit of flavor to the filling. Just want to get be able to coat everything a little bit. preheating on 375. Okay, that's pretty good. And then the other thing that I'm going to do to my filling, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off, is I'm going to add about a half a cup or so of my cheese. Now I have a mixture of cheeses here. You can use whatever cheese you like. Um, I had several open packages in my refrigerator, so I just mixed them all together. Um, I've got some Colby Jack. I have a Mexican blend and um, cheddar, I believe. So I just mix them together and um, we're gonna put a little bit, but you can use whatever you like. Pepper Jack, if you want a little more heat is great. Just plain Monterey Jack cheese, plain cheddar, whatever you like. I just like for my filling to have some cheese in it. Beefy and cheesy is what we're gonna have here. And then just give it a second for your cheese to melt a little bit. And then we're gonna put a little bit of sauce in the bottom of our pan. And then we're gonna start making our enchiladas. You can use whatever tortillas you like. Um, I'm gonna be using the carb balance ones. These are pretty good if you guys are trying to watch your carbs. These are really good and they um, only have 70 calories of tortilla. So that's nice, I like that. Um, if you use corn tortillas, which are really flavorful, you're gonna wanna dip them in your sauce first to make them pliable. I'm just gonna use the flour here. And then all I do is put a little bit of filling down the middle of my tortilla. And then I roll it up and stick it in my pan. I make mine pretty generous. And then you want to place some seam side down in your pan. I did spray my pan with nonstick cooking spray. Um, I used this avocado nonstick spray. Have you guys tried this? It's pretty good. I like it. An avocado is all the rage right now and fits in with our Mexican theme. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven enchiladas out of that. Technically, you could probably get eight, but I'm pretty generous with my filling. If you're going to have an enchilada, have an enchilada, right? Okay, so anyway, once you fill your tortillas, then I take the rest of my sauce, I like my sauce on my enchiladas, and I just drown them in the sauce. I like it that way. If you don't want all that sauce, you don't have to use it. You can always freeze it for another time. 
and then we're going to put some cheese on top. This meal is not figure friendly, but it is oh so satisfying. Everything's about balance, right? Everything in moderation. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna put them in a 375 degree oven until everything is nice and bubbly and my cheese has got a little bit of a golden brown crust on top. Okay guys, we are back. I want you to see this beautiful pan of ooey gooey yumminess. Look how beautiful those are. Perfectly browned on top, so good. My kitchen smells absolutely amazing. So I have plated mine up how beautiful does that look? I can't wait to eat it. I put a little salad on the side with some fresh peppers and cilantro and pepper, um, romaine lettuce. I said everything's, life's about balance, right? And my, everything in moderation. So I have my ooey gooey, cheesy enchilada over here and the healthy stuff on the other side. So it's balanced, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. Really the point of this video was just to show you how easy it is to make your very own enchilada sauce and stop eating the stuff in the can at the grocery store. Now I did want to mention, or I did want to ask, do what are any of my canners interested in me doing a video on a canned version of enchilada sauce? We can't exactly do this exact recipe because it has flour in it and you can't can things with flour in it so um, but if you're interested in an enchilada recipe we can do that so just let me know in the comment section if you'd be interested in a canning version and thanks so much for stopping by today I hope you have a great weekend and um, if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section if you're not a subscriber subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of the fun and i will see you next time thanks so much for watching